first of all tutamwacha wasalimie then atuambie what he has for us but uh, we have a lot for you guys hi wesh i'm very fine how are you uh very fine you looking good thank you so much uh -huh. i want to appreciate all of you actually for coming and uh, actually for the efforts that i've seen uh actually follow most of you uh probably i'm a new entrant that was what i would say uh been in the country right now is like 10 days so the politics have not started yet but i want to declare that uh, the young people we have are candidates who are in this case who is patrick osoi i want to contest for kenyan presence in 2027 and uh, i have many reasons because we've been always been promising about young people taking over and all that stuff but it's just been too long so it is our responsibility as young men it's our responsibility as young ladies it's our responsibility as this generation to have a generation change in this country Yeah so that's me uh, Patrick Osoi is my name yeah what inspires you to come to come up with the idea of now being a, uh, being the president of Kenya because of course we already have a president Correct. but so many people are there who wants to join presidential uh, Correct. Seat, and maybe yes. what inspired you uh many things have inspired me uh having worked with the government uh that is uh worked in KDF and as a special for soldier i also worked in the national intelligence service I uh, also worked uh, abroad uh, that is in the, in the US so it has given me it has given me a lot of insight to become the Kenyan president reasons being I've seen that we are not uh, guided by the policies so we had we had a lot of challenges especially when I was in the government and seeing that policies are not put in place and people do not follow the policies so I want to see a country that is guided by policies and a, a country that is not divided by whichever way so that now if we have policies whoever becomes the president is none of our business because the country will be already done so i want to come on board as a youngster uh, to make sure that we have policies and these policies will be able to guide everyone so uh, you will not hear about uh, maybe like wewe ni mkikuyu wewe ni mkabila gani wewe ni kutoka wa So those are the only things that have made me to be to to necessitate me to be uh, to run for Kenyan president 2027. Yes. Okay, so since today you're here with Kenyan creators, yes. what is your plan with Kenyan creators? What plan do you have in store for us? Actually, let me say this, uh it's a bit challenging to the government because you guys you just come out. Nobody came for you and say that you guys we have this for you. You get what I mean? So one of the reason and one of the things that I want to declare here that I want to work closely especially with the, the content creators we want to see uh, people experts like you guys coming on board guide me even if i become the president today so that now i am guided from the point of expertise because if i stand to say that i am a man who knows it all then i'll be lying to kenyans so i want you guys to gang up together as you've been always so that now we have expert will guide us on how we are able to help the content creators in this country to go abroad and be all the boundaries of this country mm -hmm. yes you know first i know you have some of the things that you've uh, written down that you're going to yes that you want to change Correct. in our government yes so there are things uh, one of the things that i want to to declare that uh, we have a problem yeah. and this problem has been there for many years since 1963 one of the reasons uh, and some of the things are deception we have been having deceptive deceptive politics we've been having petroleum in politics we've been having uh, policies that do not work after every five years we normally start afresh that means that this country goes zero again so why can't we have a government why can't we come with policies that will guide us after every five years 10 years we still are strong as a country so please uh, i want to to say that uh, Uh, those are some of the reasons even um, also security forces having come from security point of view having been in the forces i want to say that uh, it's a paramount for us to fight corruption in this country it is paramount to understand that is a corruption is a is, is a security issue so if we are able to deal with security agencies in this country and able to empower them to be able to help us to bring culprits on board we are going to have a country but we cannot wait to see a country uh, that is getting drawn uh, in corruption and deception so that is uh, uh, some of the things that are uh, water for yes. what is your general opinion on the finance bill just yeah actually on finance bill let me just be honest with you guys uh, this is just a booklet and this booklet is just drafted 
I want to say, apology, uh, not even apologizing to anyone. The finance bill that we have, it is drafted by the people beyond these boundaries of this country. Because we have a lot of debts. We have gone beyond our limit. We live, we, 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 in, according to our, our GDP, uh, GDP to, uh, to our taxation, actually we make, we actually utilize 20% as a country, which means every time we will have to go borrowing. So these people that we have been borrowing money from, these people who have been giving us money, are the people drafting this bill for us because they, they want security, they want to be sure that they are going to be paid their money. So this thing is not about our parliamentarians. It's not about the president drafting the bill. It's a bill that has been drafted beyond the boundaries of this country. Yes. Rate our president in a scale of one to ten. The work that he has done. Uh, absolutely, I would say that uh, probably he's trying his best. Uh, I, I always say that every person, if he became the president, that means he was trying to to do his best. But. Uh, he need to listen to experts, he need to listen to people, he need to listen to young people and people who are on the ground to tell him what and what is needed on the ground. Not to dictate things, because once you dictate things, probably it's not the way. So we need to, we need to listen to experts. Uh, if it is economy, about economy, let's have economists that are guiding him on how to handle this country. If about politics, geopolitics, global politics, let us have political scientists guiding this country on how we are supposed to handle our geopolitics. Because right now, president is not a political scientist. He is not an economist. So when he goes out there and he does not have those experts to guide him on how to handle the issues in this country is very dangerous for him as a person. The other day you saw uh, him saying that he was hovered a chopper, uh, a jet, to go to the, to, to the US. One, that is a violation of our constitution. It is wrong for any state officer to accept any goodies or any offers. You get what I mean? So another thing is a security issue. Are we sure? Are we contented? Is our is our president safe? Right? Because if somebody can offer a, a private jet, which means uh, those are kind of things that we need to look into, our president need to listen to experts. Our, our president need to call experts on board to be able to run this country before we take over in 2027, because we are taking it over in 2027. Yes. Do you, do you intend to run with a given party, like the ODM and the Actually, on issues of political parties, I want to be very clear. I want and I want to advise Kenyan everywhere you're watching me that let us 2027, let it not be political parties politics. Let us not have a, 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 a tribal politics. Let us have a Kenyan that is saying enough is enough so that we are able to change the narratives of uh, political parties because these political parties basically these are uh, enterprises for people to make money. So let us not focus on, on, on the which party what, uh, what is this party that we want to follow because these are all enterprises for people to make money. Yes. Okay, so what is the main issue you're going to deal with uh, in Kenya? The main issue that has brought you to come out and want to become the president of Kenya. Correct. Actually, um, main issues, one is corruption issue. I know how much this country loses every day in matters corruption. So I want to say that corruption will be a bone con con contention for me to deal with. We need to deal with the co corruption masslessly with no reservation. So corruption is an issue that we need to deal with with no reservation. Two, we need to do something called uh, fortification of our security forces. We need to have a secure country. We need to have a, a country where there is high responses for emergencies or even when you have an issue, you, they're able to be handled in the best way. We also need to have a, a, a content, a, a self-sustaining economy whereby it, every Kenyan will be able to be Satisfied, uh, satisfied, and be able to to be sus uh, sustainable. That is what I, I would say. In, in matters of employment, yeah. uh, the youth are the most who are suffering. Correct. Do you, uh, in your incoming Correct. Uh, government, yes. What is the strategy that you are, you are going to use so that these youth get to Correct. Correct. We have something called uh, economic uh, economic corporations. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's an aspect that is used by countries like uh, uh, Estonia, uh, Switzerland. They have the best economic model in the world. If you check, if these are the countries that we are emulating today, at least this country will be in another level. But we are emulating uh, countries like America, which are in the top five in debt. If you check the top five countries with highest debt, US as a country is among them. So if 
uh, in handling the issues of employment, one, one, we need to accept the fact that if the government sets an age limit of retirement, which in this case is 60 years, which means this person, if he was employed at 25 years, he has worked for around 30, uh, 30, 30 35 years. So this is one, one of the model. One, I want to say that every organization, every company that will be able to have innovations and employ youth, we are going to reduce their taxes so that now they have more room for employment. Two, we are also going to make sure that if somebody is employed at 25 years, you're going to work for the government for 30 years or 55 years to retire. So that now, from that point, the person who has cleared campus at 25, he can get a job at 25 years. So we have a circular or a, 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 a cycling, uh, something, something that is a cycle that is able to, be, to sustain people who are in employment. Also, we are going to support a lot of innovation, innovations, create, uh, create uh, hats and all that stuff. Because in a lipasana, you get what I mean? So we need to support sports and even hats so that we are also to empower our young people. Yes. All right. Thank you yes. so much, yeah. Mukesh. Karibu sana. And I want again to appreciate you guys for coming. And I want you guys to take this very serious. Uh, the experience, somebody asked me about my experience. I know. The fact that I asked my Mwashimi Wanjalangu up there how many times he has been in National Intelligence Academy. This is an academy that helps MPs and government officials to run the government. I myself am, I, I have been in that institution. So I have trained people in this country to run the government. So which means I understand the issues affecting this country. I understand the national uh, interest of our country, Kenya. I understand the natural resources that we have as a country. So these are the things that we need to measure on and actually to be able to support our, our, our people. So there is um, hope and there is future for you as young people because I myself as part of Kosoi, I'm not going to turn back. Again, I am not going to be bought. I want to make it clear that there is no money that can buy me to be able to betray the Kenyan people and to betray the young people because they are the people that are going to put me in place. Before I forget, for matter succession in uh, our elder people, we want to, res to be very respectful to our elderly, el elderly people. That every person who turns 55 to 60 years will be a senior citizen. These senior citizens, they have been paying taxes for all, over 30 years, which means after you become a senior citizen, we are not going to demand any taxes from you. Actually, we are going to see we support you as a senior citizen so that we are young people, we work hard to be able to sustain our economy as a country. So there is uh, also uh, the, the elderly not to be left behind saying that uh, sasa our to working here katika serikali sisi tuakuwa namna gani. We are going to cater for them and we are going to make sure that everybody is satisfied. Yes. And we are going to copy the taxation models that of the countries that are driving, like Estonia, Switzerland, and other places. Not a country that is still uh, uh, like struggling. Yes. Thank you, Mukesh. Yeah. Thank you so much.